our meetings, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, Kelly is going to share a slide with us. So uh, you can stand if you would like, but we just appreciate you joining us in the pledge. Kelly, can I, I can't tell if we can see that slide. Yet. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. I, you know, I had it all ready and I was seeing it wonderful. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great. So please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of, America of America and to the, and republic, to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Great. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, I'm actually going to, uh, before we begin with the regular meeting, I do want to take a moment um, to share with you some news about one of our fellow Rotarians, Dick McKean. So um, Dick passed away this week on Tuesday, March 9th. And I was able to reach out to a few of our fellow Rotarians who helped uh, provide some additional information on Dick. Um, Dick was born in 1933 in Chicago, Illinois. He is the son of Eugene and Dorothy McKean. He, he graduated from Mount Vernon High School and Cornell College, served in the U.S. Army, and in 1967, married his wife, Kathleen Lillis, at St. Thomas More Church in Iowa City. Dick was a dedicated realtor for over 44 years as an agent with Leppett Krieger Realtors. He was very active in the real estate industry, serving on many professional organizations and committees, including serving a term as president of the Iowa City Area Association of Realtors and a term as president of the Iowa Association of Realtors and as regional vice president of the National Association of Realtors. He was named Realtor of the Year by two Iowa organizations and received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Iowa City Area Association of Realtors. So when I look at all of that additional service to his industry, the one thing it makes me think about is what a true Rotarian, service above self. So I did ask a few Rotarians to share a few thoughts and I learned about his amazing service to his profession, but that he was always willing to show a new realtor the ropes. I also learned that when the ICAD program was chartered in 1984, Dick was an early supporter of this vision and a source of encouragement. For ICAD to succeed, it needed community leaders to share the vision and support the cause. And Dick was one of those community leaders to set help with the start of that organization. He was a valuable source of support for our community development effort for decades. Again, a true Rotarian service above self. Now, I knew Dick was a really big Hawkeye fan. I had met him through a number of different university events. But what I didn't know is that Dick, along with several others, helped found the Johnson County Eye Club. Now, he was a huge supporter of football, wrestling, women's athletics. And he and Kathleen were very strong supporters of Dr. Christine Grant as she developed the women's programs at Iowa. And he was also, I learned, instrumental in helping the Hawkeyes attract Vivian Stringer to Iowa as the women's basketball coach. So here's a great quote from, about Dick from former Iowa football assistant coach, Donnie Patterson. He spoke of Dick as being kind to a fault and one who never knew a stranger. Again, true Rotarian. He loved communicating with friends and clients over a meal, and he enjoyed doing so at our Rotary meetings. Now, we have heard from Kathleen, his widow, that she has stated that we shouldn't feel bad about his passing, as he is now up in heaven talking to his great friends, Hayden Fry and fellow Rotarian, Bump Elliott. There is no denying that Dick Elliott lived a life full of impact, friendship, and love. So please join me for a minute of silence in honor of our fellow Rotarian, Dick McKean.
Thank you very much. So I do want to let you know that uh, Lensing Funeral Home is handling all of the arrangements. His obituary is on their website and there is information on the services there as well. And now we will move into the meeting and I will turn it over to Kelly for some Zoom tips for everyone. Kelly? Great, thank you, President Barb. So just a quick <coughs> reminder to please um, use the mute button to mute your microphone, especially during the presentations as it just mitigates some of the, out, um, the outside noise and allows everyone to hear the speaker um, more clearly. Also, if you go up in your right-hand corner, you'll see options on viewing. You can either view as a gallery, which you could be doing right now, but certainly suggest when the speakers start to go ahead into the speaker view. Again, it just allows for a much clearer picture. Also, if you have a question um, during this presentation or afterwards during Q&A, please utilize your, the participation or participants tab and raise your hand and we will absolutely call on you to get your question answered, as well as after um, we start introducing guests and visitors, um, you will also be able to raise your hand sharing if you have a guest or visitor and we will ask um, our guests to unmute their microphones and introduce themselves. And with that, I will turn it back over to President Barb. Thanks so much, Kelly, I appreciate that. So now would be the time that you get to practice one of your Zoom skills and that you can go into that participant button and raise your hand for introductions. So I know that we probably have a lot of people who are joining us today and you can, you know, Rotarians can introduce their guests or guests. If you're new here, please just go in, raise your hand and then Kelly will call on you and you can just say a few words and introduce yourselves to the rest of us. So I know I saw Susan Shalow out there. Susan, I'm going to turn this over to you, Kelly, so that you can call on people. Okay, yes, I'm not seeing any raised hands, but I see Susan on there. <laughs> yeah, thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm a, a member of the Trail Board of Directors, and I'm, I'm uh, really pleased that our new executive director, uh, Bob Unti, will be speaking to you today. And it's just great to see so many familiar faces. I love what you all do and uh, appreciate you so much. Thanks for letting us sit in today. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. All right. It looks like Ryan Bell has a guest. I do. And I saw she has her hand raised, too. So I was trying to figure out how to lower my hand, but I'm not that quick. Um, Krista Payne is here today. She's a, an insurance agent slash financial planner with Country Financial and uh, a true Rotarian at heart. She gives a lot to her community and uh, I would like for Krista to introduce herself. Also, I'll say uh, Christina probably has uh, invited Krista a whole bunch of times throughout her days in Iowa City. So I feel a little bad stepping on Christina's toes, but not that bad. So... <laughs> Ryan, you only got her because we're not singing in Zoom. <laughs> Fair enough. Krista, tell us hi. Hey, everyone. Yeah, that's true. I don't sing, and that was what scared me off my last visit. Um, but Ryan and Christina have both been trying to get me to um, attend one of these meetings for quite some time, and I figured it was time. I definitely want to get more involved and get to know everyone better. So thanks for having me. Great, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Krista. And we do have Gary Wicklin joining us from Vail, Colorado as a guest Rotarian. So welcome, Gary. All right. Well, other than that, I don't see any other raised hands, President Barb. Okay, well, I do think Alex Taylor is out there. Alex, don't you want to say hello? Come on. Uh Thank you very much, Barb. It's good to see everybody. Uh, and I'm here with Trail of Johnson County. I look forward to uh, having Bob Untight introduce uh, himself to you. And it's fantastic to see so many fun and friendly faces. See, you should just come back and visit us more often. All of you, Krista, Susan, Alex, we'd love to have you again. So invitation is open. So next we'll move on to announcements. And I know that Ryan Bell has an announcement about the ride for polio, Ryan? Yes, the ride to end polio is coming up um, in April. Um, we're doing it a little bit different this year, obviously. There's no big gathering of riders uh, circling 
um, a, a track or anything, it's going to be virtual. So what that means is it's super easy to participate. Um, really, all you have to do between now and April 10th is exercise for 30 minutes. If you ride a bike, ride that bike. If you can go for a walk, go for a run, anything will count. And then once you do that, pledge $30 to uh, the, the end polio committee. So it's super easy. I actually had a poster made that I forgot or didn't get to John Brown in time for our slides, but we've got some time here and I'll announce that here in the coming weeks as well. So just get that in your minds that you're gonna exercise for 30 minutes in the next month, more to come. Great, thank you, Ryan. Uh, also, we have an announcement from Br Brad Baldus about the golf outing. Brad? Thank you, President Barb. I'm going to attempt to share my screen straight away here. And there we go. So we are approaching warmer weather and hopefully a year with less COVID impact. So our annual rotary sponsored Ronald McDonald House uh, golf tournament fundraiser is planned to take place this year after having to cancel it, postpone it, and then cancel it last year. It is set for Monday, June 7th. And we're going to do it a little differently this year, similar to the way a lot of golf events took place last year, where we're going to have tee times instead of a shotgun start to try to limit large gatherings, um, not knowing exactly where things are gonna be in June regarding vaccinations and so on and so forth. So we're, we're optimistic and confident based on talking to Finkbein staff and, and what they um, were able to do last year that, that we can have a safe event and return to trying to raise significant dollars for the local Ronald McDonald House like we've done for 19 years, last year being the exception where we raised about half of what we normally do. Um, but you can see on this page over $800,000 has been raised by, by this event that has been organized and run by our club in conjunction with the Ronald McDonald House to, of Eastern Iowa and Western Illinois. So, um, I wanted to make sure everyone was aware that it is happening this year. The date, um, if you are a golfer, please um, come to the website, which we'll put in the chat uh, to register a team or as an individual. Um, and also, if you're not a golfer, please consider being a sponsor, which is also all the information is listed on this page where your business or individual can contribute uh, and make an impact to the local Ronald McDonald House. And for those who are not golfers or uh, able to sponsor, there are volunteer opportunities, which we will talk more about in the coming months. Um, but like last year, we have the adopt a program um, donation opportunity as well, where you can give a specific dollar amount that goes to a specific purpose uh, at the house, such as a, a toy for a child or feeding a family for one day. Um, the list of options are all on this website related to the For the House or For the Families is what we call it now, um, uh, Rotary Sponsored Ronald McDonald House Golf Tournament event. So you'll hear more uh, over the next couple of months from my committee. And I, I would also mention Dick McKean was a, uh, an active member of our committee for a number of years helping um, gather in-kind prizes for for the event and he was, um, he was always, as Barb described, a uh, smile and a bright light uh, in our uh, efforts to raise money for the Ronald McDonald House. So he will be missed. Um, but that, uh, just wanted to let everybody know that that is happening this year and we would appreciate any support any Rotarians are willing to provide in any of those uh, facets. Registering to play, uh, being a sponsor, uh, donating a specific item, uh, adopting a program for the house or ultimately volunteering when we get closer. And Brad, we do have a question in the chat about, do you have to be a Rotarian to golf? Absolutely not. You just have to be willing to pay the registration fee and show up. Perfect. Perfect. Well, that's great. And so, you know, everybody, there's a, 
you know, with Dick's passing, that means there is an opportunity for other people to step up and find those great in-kind gift prizes for the event. So uh, I highly recommend, you know, thinking about how you could volunteer in this event. So next we'll turn it over to Dave Brown, who has an announcement. Dave? Thanks, President Barb. We have a couple announcements. There's there's two committees I sit on uh, along with Ryan Bell. We have the Tree Committee and we have the Environmental Concerns Committee. And just to get you thinking about it, on April the 22nd is Earth Day. So that Saturday is the 24th. At eight o'clock, uh, there's gonna be a project to do some tree planting at Creekside Park. Uh, all those trees that were lost during the derecho or lost to Emerald Ash Borer. Uh, there's 50 something trees going back in and they're going to want about 25 to 30 people for that project. Also at 10 o'clock, we're going to go ahead and do the phase two of adopt a highway. So uh, we're going to meet out there. We're going to follow COVID guidelines. And if you guys are comfortable, weather permitting, uh, hopefully it'll be a nice day and we'll have a lot of fun. Thanks. That's great. Great idea. And next announcement from Patty McCarthy. Patty. I just want to take a, a few seconds to say thank you to so many of you who have honored Lolly Eggers, the library director from 1974 through 1994, with wonderful memorial gifts, your love of the library and um, her and her legacy just have really been amazing to see. Lolly loved jazz music, so we are planning some kind of a jazzy something when we can do that. But um, so many of you have, have blessed us, and I just say thank you again. Thanks. You bet. Dang, we have a, a great community, don't we? We have like these amazing individuals who have had a tremendous impact. And then we have our kick-ass club, excuse my language, but here we are, we're planting trees. We're planning a golf outing for the Ronald McDonald house. We're doing all kinds of stuff. We're trying to beat polio, like pretty awesome. So great club, great members, but we do have an opportunity for you. So we know that on the same day as that tree planting, you can get up early, you can plant some trees, then you can clean the highway, you can take a nap if you need to. And then that evening is a district conference, which is both an in-person aspect as well as virtual. And so we want, we the board would like to encourage a lot of you to participate in that district conference. And so we are willing to support the registration of 20 members for the virtual conference. So registration virtually is $25. So if you are interested in participating in the district conference virtually, all you need to do is go out to the district website and then register for that and then send your receipt to either me or to Neil Quellhorst and we will reimburse you for that after the event. So again, we want to encourage people to get more involved as well as more involved at the district level. So next we will go to Chuck Swanson who will provide for us his Rotary Moment of Gratitude and Positivity. And for those of you who have not witnessed this before, if you're one of our visitors, what we did is when we moved to a virtual format, President Jim Conard at that time, he had this brilliant idea that maybe we should reach out to Rotarians to each share about what makes us positive, what keeps us what are we grateful for? And so since that time, we have done this every single week. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the meeting. And so today we have asked Chuck Swanson to share his Rotary moment of gratitude and positivity. Chuck? Thank you, President Barb. So one of my favorite parts of working at Hancher is helping to create memories that last a lifetime. But however, as you all know, this past year has obviously not been a year for creating Hancher memories. It's been a tough year for the performing arts. So I've learned to maintain my positivity by asking people to share their favorite Hancher memory. And I love hearing those stories. So today I wanna to share with you some of my favorite memories of bringing Hancher artists over the years to our Rotary Club. And by doing that, I'm hoping to spark some of your memories from those artist visits. 
So a long, long time ago, and I remember Dick McKean was there for this too, and it was over 10 years ago, we brought the National Acrobats of the People's Republic of China to Rotary. This was at the Athletic Club. They didn't speak, but boy, did they perform. We didn't have a stage. And so they performed on the floor. And I remember all the Rotarians stood up and they came around and they formed a circle around the performance. And the acrobats were, were so taken by that. And then there was my good friend, Tomasz Kubinek, uh, who was a guest artist at Rotary. And we had just been on a statewide tour to communities. Uh, Tomasz is, oh, I would say he's first and foremost a magician, but he's also a comic. He's kind of got an old world charm to him. And so he shared stories about the statewide tour. But what I remember is that before he started his program, one of our fellow female Rotarians who was sitting at the very front table, Tomash went over to her and he asked her to open her purse. And then he started taking silverware out of her purse from the table. And he said, I didn't realize that times were so tough. And I'll never know how he made that happen, but I'm sure some of you, I hope some of you were there and you remember that. And then Kevin Spencer, another magician. Uh, he was another artist that we had taken on a statewide tour. And during his program, he shared with us how he used his magic as a way to help people rehabilitate who had been through like terrible car accidents, or even if they were um, coming back from some sort of a surgery. And I remember that Kevin's talk brought another fellow Rotarian that, um, that we'll all remember is Earl Murphy. His wife was there and Kevin's talk brought her to tears. She thought she was there to see a magician perform and she was so taken by Kevin's approach to using magic as a form of healing. And one of my most favorite programs was the day that we brought the design team from New Haven, Pelly Clark Pelly, uh, to the Rotary Club and they unveiled the new design for Hancher. Uh, Mitch Hirsch from Pelly Clark Pelly was so proud that day and Dan Teese from OPN, um, that group of people. I've never worked with such amazing people. And then I'm sure you all remember Storm Large um, and her visit to our Rotary Club at the former Highlander. Uh, she was experiencing severe back spasms that day, but she carried on in such a beautiful way talking about how music had changed her life. And then we'll all remember when she ended the program by singing the Portland Firefighters rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And of course, Machine Dazzle um, brought a lot of color to our day when he presented his program about the exhibit of costumes from the 24 decades of song piece by Taylor Mack. And Machine was dressed in drag and Machine wore clothes and accessories that he had purchased from artifacts. And then there was Victor Chiata from Rubber Band Dance uh, from Montreal, uh, and he was a star. This was at Brown Deer. He was a star when he shared his words about his unusual style of dance that he's noted for. And he also shared his excitement for our Big Splash project, which will now be in August of 2022, where his dancers will be arriving by boat and then make their way up to the front doors of Hancher to perform. So there are many, many more, but these are the memories that kind of rose to the top for me. The arts are a way to learn and understand about the world and the arts give us hope and they stretch our imaginations and spark our creativity. The arts are a way for us to connect through common experiences and to help us learn more about each other and celebrate and appreciate our friendships. Kind of sounds a little bit like Rotary to me. As Bob Hope used to say, thanks for the memories. Thank you. Oh, Chuck, that is delightful. That Thank is you. Such a wonderful array of, of memories. And I also just love your Jackson Pollock sweater. It's kind of very Pollock-esque, isn't it? <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. I do love that portion of our meetings. Um, next, I want to check in with Alyssa Brandt Jarrett. Alyssa, I believe that you're here, and I want to make sure that she is ready, but I think she's going to ride the goat today. Alyssa, are you ready? I am here. Oh. I've been texting Ryan about how much I'm dreading this. So oh, it will be fine. You are like a surrounded by love and positivity, you, whatever you say. <laughs> so, you know, the way it goes is that you have three minutes. Okay, hold on. I better like set my timer on my phone. 
Um, when we do this in person, what happens is that everybody will clap and you'll have to stop talking at three minutes. But because that is not the case, um, there we go, timer, okay. Uh, because that is not the case, what I will do for you is I will give you some cues, okay? So you're gonna get one minute with the blue folder, 30 seconds with the yellow, and then red is stop, okay? So it's gonna be that easy. And uh, I think you're gonna do a great job, okay? We all Perfect. Believe and don't worry, I totally ran out of time. So it does happen to us. So, all right. All right. Go is ahead. the video working okay? Yeah, it is. Okay. Go ahead and start. All right. So thank you for having me. And my name is Alyssa Brandt Jarrett. I am a local Iowa City native. I was born and raised here into the large Brandt family. Uh, and I went to Regina all my life and grad graduated from Regina. I was very active in athletics there and in Regina in general. Uh, after school or after Regina, I graduated and then went to Quincy University in Quincy, Illinois, which is a division two school where I played basketball uh, and majored in accounting and a minor in Spanish. Um, from there, I wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted to do and decided I loved athletics. Uh, and so I decided to continue my education and went to Illinois State University in Bloomington Normal. And I worked in the athletics department there and received my master's degree in management with an emphasis in, in athletics. Uh, that was a, a really great experience. Not only did I learn a lot, and uh, I also met my husband at that time. Jamie uh, worked for the Missouri Valley Conference office, and I volunteered to, to work at a basketball game or tournament. And so uh, we met. That's how we met. Uh, from there, I went back to Quincy University and was our women's athletic administrator for a couple of years. Then Jamie and I got married, and his dream was always to run a minor league baseball team. Uh, so we ran, we went down to Florida for a couple of years and, and chased those dreams. Um, when we found out we were expecting and had some potential complications, we decided to move back to Iowa City at that time. Uh, unfortunately, and fortunately, you don't realize the power of what the university is and can do until you really need it. Uh, my daughter um, was born premature and we were in the NICU for about four months. She had some open heart surgeries and major gut surgeries. Today, Brant is 10 and is very happy and healthy and with a shirt on, you would never know. So she's active in basketball and softball and things like that. So that's an amazing story there. Um, we then also had Marin, who is five and is crazy and exciting. So um, now I work in our family business for about 10 years and uh, stay active with my daughters. Unfortunately, my husband passed away about a year and a half ago. And so uh, it's me and the girls trying to figure out and navigate this new life. And uh, yeah, I'm really blessed to be in Iowa City to have great support and friends like Ryan and Tim Carty and, and people like that uh, uh, to be in my life. Perfect, perfect, well done. I think we can all give her a round of applause. Mm. See, Alyssa, you survived yeah. and you did a great job. And we all got to learn a little bit about you. So that's the fun of this tradition <laughs> of riding the goat, as they say, is that we get to learn a little bit about you and <laughs> so, you know, which is all a plus. So thank sure. you. Thanks, thanks for having me. You bet. All right, well, we'll move on to our program now. I'm gonna turn it over to Eric Weiler who will introduce our guest, Eric. Great, uh, thank you, President Barb. It's great to see everyone today. Our uh, speaker today is an Iowa boy. He was born and raised in Davenport and Duran, Iowa. He is a graduate of Coe College and he did graduate study of nonprofits at the University of San Francisco. He has run mediation programs in the courts in Chicago and spent more than a decade in faith-based community organization in Milwaukee, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. Since returning to Iowa back in 2004, he has managed a nonprofit training program at the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation, led Main Street Atumwa, 
and the Orpian Theater in Marshalltown. He is currently the executive director of Trail of Johnson County, and he has two cats at home. Please help me give a warm rotary welcome to our speaker today, Bob Untide. Thank you. Um, it's it's so um, unusual to get a, a, a virtual warm welcome, but I know that that is what is happening. I'm going to share my um, my PowerPoint uh, show here now. And I think we're back on it. I go back to the page. Um, so I began four months ago with uh, Trail of Johnson County. Um, and Trail uh, works very hard to uh, provide really um, great opportunities for uh, social engagement and education, and then also um, uh, in, ensure that, that seniors uh, make, can maintain their, their independence by uh, connecting them with volunteers who will do things like taking them on doctor's appointments. I'm, I'm gonna talk about that now, but, but I think part of, part of what I wanna leave you with uh, just in, in, uh, in emphasis is the idea that aging is an opportunity and that dependence helps everyone. The other thing that um, I, I, I want to mention is that, that one of the, the more important parts of why I took this job last November um, was just the quality of the people that have been involved in it for the last four years. And that includes a Susan and Alex who are with today. So as, as you know, Probably uh, Johnson County Love America is aging. Um, uh, the, I'll, I'll let you read this this slide for yourself, but I think it is really uh, worthy of note that um, within the next couple of years, we'll, we'll be at at, a, at twenty between twenty and twenty five percent of the population will be a person sixty and older. And so um, I believe that Trail is is getting ahead of. Um, um, other parts of, of society and our economy in, in trying to find ways in which we can maintain a quality of life and, and active participation on the part of, of folks that are older. Um, the growth of seniors is faster than any other demographic group, including children. So that, this is an important reality that uh, we're, we're part of um, celebrating. And here's how TRAIL makes a difference. So Tools and Resources for Active Independent Living of Johnson County is an organization with 170 plus members and about 45 or so volunteers. The, the main way we uh, engage members uh, is through one or, or both of two services we offer. So in social and, and educational programs, um, we're really delighted to have Amanda Lensing as one of our, our regular speakers these days uh, through the University of Iowa Libraries. Uh, this, is a, this picture is an example of something that's, that's coming up, I believe next week that we'll be looking at uh, women photographers in the United States. I, my mother lives in Coralville and I participated with her on one of these recently that looked at the, the dietary habits of American families since 1890. And she had a, a, a lot of reflection about how her mother um, uh, sort of bucked trends in, in buying frozen food after World War II um, to maintain sort of a, a, part, a, 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 a life uh, for, for her family of, of fresh, foods. It was really, an, uh, not only was it a, an example of ways in which we, we've learned and reflected um, as an organization, but for me personally, uh, because my mother is now a member, um, it's been a way that we've connected in a, in a different and interesting way too. So the social educational programming um, is really, I think, a, a, a community of people uh, led by Barb Stein, who just do uh, striking work to uh, engage folks and, it, and it, a, a lot of fun as well. Um, I'm gonna try to bring up this video now. This normally will take, a, there we go. That's quicker than I thought, good deal. Hi everyone, my name is Allison and I am a volunteer with TRAIL. I was driven to volunteer with TRAIL because my soon to be 91 year old grandpa is my best friend. We talk daily. He lives in Chicago and continues to live independently in his home, so I can only imagine how valuable TRAIL would be in his life. Through TRAIL, I have and continue to form incredible intergenerational relationships with many of our members. I have fulfilled a wide variety of member requests from cleaning to technology support to accompanying one of our members to many of the University of Iowa women's basketball games. 
It has been a wonderful experience and I cannot say enough good things about it. So I encourage you all to check out Trail and consider joining us as a volunteer, a member or both. So there we have uh, Allison, um, who is uh, the, now the chair of our volunteer committee. Part of why I chose this video too is just to recognize that um, while uh, we are an organization that, that is predominantly seniors, this can involve anyone. Um, and I think there's some real opportunities for, for a connection that happened too. Um, over a thousand times in the last four years, I believe that that, that number of service re, uh, requests that we fulfilled um, just, just hit a, th a thousand uh, at the end of February. Um, but persons in Johnson County have received help from a trail volunteer pro providing any number of service, including as Allison talked about, escorting someone to a uh, University of Iowa women's basketball games. So. Uh, that, that's a volunteer perk you don't get everywhere, but also a lot of times, uh, many of our, our opportunities are uh, giving people rides, um, uh, IT help, uh, a check-in phone calls, uh, fixing a hinge, you know, as an example of just a household task, as well as smoke, smoke detector maintenance and, and, and many other things that um, are, are part of really the, the, the essence of this organization in allowing people to maintain their independence. Um, we heard a couple of days ago from someone who said that that they they uh, they they came to regret a little bit their uh, kitchen uh, re redesign because they they installed lights that were are 12 feet above the ground and now they don't want to change the light bulbs anymore. So um, this is a way in which we're still allowing people to enjoy their own kitchens. And Rotary is helping this effort. So Trail has begun with a couple of churches, um, some assistance from the, the area um, heritage aging uh, uh, agency and, and the work of a local marketing company um, to do focus groups and, and to reach out to low income persons uh, in the county. Because of a $5,000 grant that, that you gave us last November, we're gonna be providing annual memberships for low income persons for as little as $10 a year. Normally these would be $50 a month. And so Rotary is helping us already in uh, having a greater impact. We're, we're grateful for that. Um, it is a bit by coincidence, uh, but, but we uh, enrolled two low-income persons last week who are really looking forward to, to belonging to us and uh, uh, you know, enjoying the, the, the company that's part of this effort too. Um, more broadly, um, our society benefits from active independent seniors and connection is the heart of excuse me, what real community is about. I, I've heard from uh, about 60 folks that are connected uh, to trail intimately and in meetings with dozens of others. One of the things that, that I note is that um, before the pandemic, the board of trail itself used to go to dinner together after meetings. I, I have been involved in dozens of nonprofits and, and ran a training center that exposed me to hundreds more. That's not a common thing. And they do it in large part because they enjoy each other's company. And that's a thing that I'm hearing over and over again. Um, I think one of the most important things that we have to preserve in, in terms of our culture moving forward as we grow is that, that sense of, of just real happiness in, in, in getting together with people. I, I will conclude with that line, uh, honest to Pete, joy is one of the things that trail, trail brings. And then, um, aging is an opportunity that, that trail is seizing. A good number of our volunteers are also members, as Allison noted. Um, they, they value the connection that, that uh, they're, they're, great, they're, connect, they're making with, with people. So last week, I know that, that one volunteer who took a, a 93 year old woman to get her hair cut uh, in Coralville um, was found out that uh, they were only two blocks away from a pupusaria which I'd encourage everyone to, to check out if you haven't been there before. But um, that volunteer then brought a pupusa to the senior who is just, she was so charming in receiving a $2.25 gift. It was just, it was quite moving. Um, drivers, is, which is a, a large part of what we do is, is transport people to, um, oh, someone took someone to the dry cleaners, I think last week, um, the hairdresser, doctor's appointments regularly report that they value the relationships they make with trail, trail members. Um, and it's common for, for pairings to happen uh, informally um, in, in the organization and for this to become an important part of the lives of both volunteers and members. Um, we are part of a national organization called Village to Village. 
and, a, and one, one of these uh, groups, they, they kind of give us broader understanding of, of ways in which we can Im, uh, help to uh, uh, increase the independence and the, the quality of life for, for seniors. And one of, one of those groups in California states their vision as uh, envisioning a society where all stages of life offer meaningful opportunities for growth, connection, and joy, where people of all backgrounds and economic means can age with dignity, purpose, and self-determination. And, and I, I just think the, the, the real benefit to trail is that this is what all of us want. This is what all of us want for our parents, for even our neighbors. Um, I live next door uh, to a, a woman in her 70s who um, didn't always shovel her sidewalk. And it, it not only did it seem like uh, uh, it would be ridiculous for me to be working for trail and not take advantage of that opportunity to help her out, but, but she has sometimes like opened her door and just said, thank you. And, and having just moved back to, to this area, um, it's nice to be able to make that, that friendly connection uh, right up front. And I think that that's really part of the, the mission of trail is to, is to take advantage of how aging is an opportunity for us to belong to one another. And this, uh, this is from a, 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 a spot in uh, Arizona, the idea of watching for senior citizens. Um, because we're, we're coming to become a, a, a bigger part of the overall population. Because I believe that's, that seniors are independent of trail, but also with us, looking for ways to, to improve the quality and experiences um, to see aging as a real opportunity. And, for, and um, with trail in Johnson County, to build better social networks than ever oh before. Oh my gosh, Pete, seriously. <laughs> And then I'll leave you with this. Um, to volunteer or join TRAIL, you can contact our office this way. And uh, we greatly appreciate your support. And we are working to utilize uh, those funds in, uh, in marketing so that we can expand our reach and impact uh, for low-income folks in, in Johnson County. So you're making a difference with us already. Thanks very much. Any thoughts or questions? Well, we'll see if we have any questions. Bob, do you want to stop sharing your screen there? Um, I do have a question. You referred to a, this is not trail related, okay. but you referred to the, what was it, Papalusa or something? What are you talking about? Keep going. What? Keep reminding me. The, the person, the volunteer bought the. Oh, pupusa. A pupusa. What a pupusa is that? Pupusa is a, um, a traditional, <laughs> is a traditional, um, uh, food of uh, Central America, El Salvador and uh, Nicaragua, especially, they look like small pancakes. They're, they're about this big and they're stuffed with meats and spices. They're, they come often with a side of slaw and often a crema um, and maybe a hot sauce. And, and I've forgotten the name. Uh, oh gosh. It's in Coralville though, you said. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up. And before we, before we uh, end, I'll, I'll tell you the name and location of the place. Because okay, it really I know is. That was completely unrelated, but you like yeah. referred to a food <laughs> item, you know, or whatever that I just had no idea. So but here's, here's what I would say, though. I think it is related because food has traditionally been an important part of the cultural experience of trail members. So I, I think it's well within our mission to be promoting pupusas. Well, I think that, you know, when you talk about your board members all getting together, having dinner after meetings, knowing some of the board members that I do, I think you have a wonderful group of people to gather with. So I think yeah. that uh, that totally makes sense to me. So I'm going to open it up to others. So if people have a question for Bob, you can simply raise your hand in the chat or you can put something into the chat if you'd like to, to type it. Um, Oh, it looks like John has also shared a link for it's La ben Bendicion, La Bendicion, La Bendicion on 2nd Street in Coralville. There we go. Wow. Well, we all learned that today, didn't we? There's another benefit. So, um, so, but we'd love to open it up for questions. So, Bob, if people want to take advantage of the trail services, they yes. go to your website, do they fill out a form? Can they just register and pay there? How does that work? Uh, yes, the, the, we have two levels of membership, the affiliate member, which is primarily the um, social and educational component, um, and that uh, application you can fill out online at trailofjohnsoncounty.org. Um, the full membership, we always want to have conversations to make sure that anyone joining us really knows what they're getting into and uh, all the benefits of it. Um, so we, we like, I'm going to mail actually someone a, uh, 
a, uh, an application today. So, and that's, that's what we end up doing. And then we'll, we'll talk with folks about getting that stuff filled out. But uh, it's $15 a month for the affiliate membership um, and $50 a month for the full membership. But your, your uh, uh, support has allowed us to do um, full memberships for $10 a year for low-income folks. So that is wonderful. So, and just a reminder to our members, if you remember at the beginning, of a, say midsummer last year, um, our club actually decided to pull some money from reserves as from as well as from money that we basically just didn't spend at the end of last year when we all went virtual. And we decided to work with our good partners at the Community Foundation of Johnson County. And uh, we were able to provide uh, various levels of grants to 12 organizations. And uh, there were about three organizations, I think, that received uh, $5,000 donations and trail of Johnson County was one of them. And we were impressed by your materials and we're impressed by the good work that you do. The fact that you are helping seniors stay in their homes, you know, helping them out with those different things, those chores that they need. So kudos. I, I would add to that too, um, in my experience of 30 some years in nonprofits in various states and running a training center, it's really hard for me to think of another organization that has as many active and engaged volunteers at, at such a deep level. If, if we were to replace all the volunteers that we have, I don't know if we could do it with the skill set that we have, but it would it would mean we'd have to have a staff of at least five or six more people. Because whether it's communications or volunteer recruitment or membership or any number of other things, uh, th these volunteers are really dedicated and just engaged. That is wonderful. Bob, um, can, I have a quick question. Bob, can you sure. share a little bit about the requirements for volunteers and training that do they go through a training and are there age limits? What does that look like for volunteers? Um, I don't, I don't, we, we don't generally encourage uh, children volunteers. I, I think that we've had a conversation in the, uh, last year about um, someone bringing their kids to a, to a, a you know, to like a volunteer experience. And, and um, you know, the, the only concern we have is, is liability, but I think that that's happening. Um, that there's no age uh, limit or range, generally speaking, for volunteers. We do a, a pretty significant orientation um, with, with folks. Uh, and then um, we're also careful, you know, like not to be putting people in situations where um, uh, the, the most frail elderly are not, are not folks that we, we necessarily are able to serve, right? Mm -hmm. So um, th these are folks like my mother, for instance, next month is going to have cataract surgery. She's not driving very much now, right? But she can still get around, you know? So uh, that, that's a perfect example of, the, of, of a, a person who, who we're, we're serving, so. The, the person I'm signing up today is a man, uh, a man in his early 70s who has leukemia and diabetes. And he doesn't get around as much either. But these, these folks are generally able to, you know, uh, 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 deal with, with anything that life is, is sending their way and, and are enjoying it too. So it's a, it's a good thing. Is like CPR or any that, anything like that required for volunteers or anything? Not, not, not at this point, no. Okay. no. And that has not really been a, uh, an, uh, an issue for us is, is again, we, we, the, the, the primary, if not exclusive reason why people stop being members of TRAIL is when they move to another, like a, 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 a more a complete um, a nursing home sort of facility or something mm -hmm. like that. When it, when it gets to a point that their, their independence is something that we just can't help them with. Sure. Um, so, so, we do, so volunteering is, is a fun experience at TRAIL. Thank you. Great. Yeah. So it sounds like some of the services that you can get kind of fall in certain categories, do they? So it sounds like there's definitely transportation that you are helping with. Yes. Some household maintenance things, like you mentioned, the light that's too far up. Are there yeah. other things that uh, we could be thinking about or, you know, whether it's some of our members that might be interested in these services? Well, so I know that the, the, the volunteer uh, application um, requests that you check one of a, a couple of dozen boxes of like things that you might be willing to do um, that uh, I know that we signed up somebody last last week or a week or two ago who was willing to mow lawns, for instance. Right. Um, Susan, do you want to do you want to add anything to this aspect of stuff? Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, one of the great things about 
trail is that the volunteering is really, uh, it's very flexible. Uh, if, if you've got time to help us out four times a week, great. If it's once a day, once a month, that's okay too. And so besides transportation, we allow volunteers or we encourage volunteers to do a number of different things. So uh, transportation is, is, as Bob said, our number one requested service, uh, but yard work is a big one. And we're coming into the spring season. So a lot of our members ask for volunteer, for yard cleanup, uh, planting, uh, weeding, that kind of thing. Um, we just went through the holiday season. One of our frequent requests is to help put up or take down holiday decorations. That's a biggie. Uh, the tech support is huge. You know, as you might imagine, many older adults are not quite as tech savvy. I would be one of them. <laughs> and so uh, our tech volunteers help with everything from, you know, a new phone or the Hulu or, you know, unplugging from cable, whatever that might be. Um, and it's really uh, one of the things that we encourage our members is to just think about what's the stuff that, you know, you're putting off because you'd re rather be doing something else. So this is less about needing something than empowering yourself to free up your own time. So if you've been putting off cleaning out the garage for months, call the trail volunteer. We can help you do that. And, you know, you can go play and do something more fun. So um, we really encourage volunteer signups because obviously as our membership grows, which is what your grant is helping us do, we're going to need more volunteers as well. Um, and yeah, just www.trailjohnsoncounty.org um, uh, will help you out. That sounds great. So great opportunities for volunteerism, as well as great opportunities for assistance for anybody who wants it. Now, I will tell you, like we have the most tech savvy Rotary Club, like, <laughs> I think, in the world, right? Everybody is like super savvy now. Yeah, maybe it's because Kelly gives Zoom tips every single week. So, um, but it is good. Chuck, do you have a question? Oh, you're muted. Yeah. I have a, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, good. I have a question for Bob. Something you mentioned, Bob, made me think about this. Do you get involved when it comes to the point that people can't live in their home anymore and they're transitioning to the nursing home or the, you know, the, you know, like an Oak Knoll or um, Melrose Meadows or something like that? Do you get involved in that? Well, Trish? you know, that's a really good question. Um, uh, there's, there's three of us now that have formed a committee with others in the county that provide social services um, for more frail elderly and some of the folks in, in Johnson County uh, social service in the government to look at the ways in which we can provide more of a, of a seamless transition, right? Mm -hmm. So that, so that um, oftentimes in, in, in my understanding, and again, I've only been here four months, so I haven't seen this myself, but oftentimes what will happen is that someone will move to our nursing home and then the the, the reduction, they still can become, maintain their membership for social and educational purposes, right? But, but the, the need for volunteer assistance has suddenly gone away. So they'll, they'll leave for that. But they're, they're, it's not often just that black and white where mm -hmm. like on Tuesday, you have a measure of independence and on Thursday, you're <laughs> in a nursing, you know, we're, we're looking to, to try to find a way at, we're researching this, we're looking at national models in Berkeley and in Michigan, especially, um, and, uh, and then also having conversations with folks locally about how we can really with other organizations be more seamless in that, in that transitional stuff, even to the extent of like perhaps um, uh, helping uh, seniors and, and maybe seniors and their children to have the uh, difficult conversations about how does that transition want to happen so that it's not so sudden and urgent, but rather it's a it's a thoughtful thing that that is engaged, you know, some of the fears or or the possibilities of the next the next stage of life. Wow. Good. That's great. Well, Bob, I really want to thank you for taking the time today to share the information about trail with our members. Um, in honor of you taking the time today, our club will actually make a donation to Rotary International's Polio Plus program. And we'll do so in your name. And that donation is actually matched two to one by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Great. So all told, this one donation will end up with 70 vaccines of polio that will be distributed around the world. And we will do so in your name. That is great. Thank you. You bet. Thanks so much for joining us today. Again, I want to encourage everybody, there's lots of content in the chat, but remember, April 24th, District Conference, April 24th, tree planting, roadside cleanup, 
this summer. Great golf event, great opportunity to get outside, great opportunity to volunteer. Perhaps you'd like to be a sponsor. Um, lots of different opportunities that are going on. In addition, get some of that exercise. Follow Ryan Bell, 30 minutes, and you too can help you know, get rid of polio by participating in the ride uh, to end polio. So we hope that you all, uh, you know, have a wonderful day. The sun is shining. The sky is blue. All great. All great. And the weather is uh, turning the corner, I think. I will happily report that the snow pile outside my front door is now gone. I have a north facing house, so like it gets no direct sun and that snow pile took forever. But this morning I noticed completely gone. So hopefully we're done with snow. Uh, I saw my first Robin the other day as well. So you know that spring is coming. So with that, I uh, thank everybody for attending and we uh, please join me in the four way test. I think Kelly, do we have a slide for the four way test as well to help people? Thank you of the things that we think we say, say or do. Or do. Is, it is it the truth? truth? Is it fair to all concerned? concerned? Will, will it build, will it build will goodwill will and better friendships? friendships? Will, will it be beneficial, beneficial to, to all, concerned? all concerned? Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you next week. All right, see you guys. Cool. Thanks, President Barb. You bet. I'm going to have to go get myself some poop, poop, poopa Yeah, you know, Kent Clark has um, raved about La Bencion as well. Benicion, I guess it is. Yeah. That's great. I had not really heard about that. So, I, yeah. I'm always up for a you know, new takeout option. So, there you go. Have a great day. Hey, thanks. You too. Bye bye. Bye.